I wanted to clean the character up a little bit and actually give his uniform just a little bit of something other than this dull gray. Uh, and if I didn't actually have a texture map, I could use uh, Exercise Vertex Paint. If you select your mesh, you can add a vertex color map to your character upon which you can paint. The denser your mesh, the uh, more detail you can paint into the vertex map. By getting a property, a color at vertices map property, uh, we can now paint on our, our character in, in full 3D. If you hit Control w to bring up your brush properties, we want to use the vertex colors aspect of the brush properties tab, and we can set our color uh, paint method to a brush or to a ray casting tool where we actually interact with the polygons or the edges of the polygons. Uh, if you press Shift W, you are now in vertex color paint mode. So if you use a paintbrush, you're actually just painting uh, kind of smooth strokes as you would expect. However, if you decide to use the ray casting brush, you can paint uh, individual sections of polygons. So if I kind of up the opacity here, you can paint the edges of polygons. If you use polygon bleeding, you can color the entire polygon just by clicking on it. So without polygon bleeding, you're basically coloring each of the quadrants of a, of a polygon. So I'm actually just going to use the, uh, the brush for now, and I'll start with a high opacity. I'm just going to give the character some pants and a shirt, uh, just to give it a little bit of color. Now keep in mind these are OpenGL settings. So uh, I'm going to actually have to translate these vertex colors into something the render tree can understand. Uh, so I'll just darken my color a little bit, kind of get into the maybe the browns for the pants. These are prison pants after all. And I'll just start painting. Now I'm getting some funny kind of artifacts here, and I'm guessing that's a result of uh, Camtasia. but it's actually painting the area that I need. I'll just kind of rough that in a little bit more. I don't want him to have too low of a <laughs> belt line. I'll say something like that. Okay, so that looks pretty good there. And then in his upper torso, uh, I'll give him a kind of a, just a, a plain colored shirt, kind of like a dirty gray, slightly sweat stained shirt. He just doesn't get a chance to change a lot. So I'll kind of pick a peach color, and I'll really kind of desaturate it and take the luminance out of it. Something like that. And again, if, if I hit uh, Shift W to paint, I can very quickly mark up uh, the geometry. At the same time, I can go in uh, and start doing a little bit of uh, additional work. I can kind of lower the opacity and go in and take some kind of bolder kind of yellows, kind of stains, and you know, kind of insinuate them by kind of having a low opacity and just kind of blending in in some areas where the character might uh, be a little greasy, you know. Anyways, just adding a little bit of variety to the map. And you can actually take this, and I'll use this vertex color map in the render tree. At the moment, if I actually draw a render region, nothing shows up. I'm actually using the original default color, and he looks like he's got PJs on. He still looks like he has PJs, but now he's got cool PJs. Uh, if I select the cloth geometry and press uh, 7, I do have a Fong shader that uh, describes the surface of my jogging suit, uh, my clothing geo, and so I'm going to actually pull in the effects of this vertex color map and then use that to drive the diffuse color of my fong, which is currently set to uh, almost 40% gray. So one of the nodes you can use to extract vertex information from, uh, from your object, from the vertex color property, is found in the texture menu of the render tree, uh, the vertex RGBA node. We'll pull that in and I'll use the color output of the vertex RGBA to drive the uh, diffuse channel um, of the fong. If you double click on the vertex color RGBA, you can actually pull in the vertex color map property, uh, specifically point to it. And uh, this is because you might have more than one vertex color attribute written to an object. 
So if I have a look now, you can see how that's been pulled in uh, as a mental ray uh, effect. And so now you could go in and layer in any of the traditional mental ray shaders uh, that you would use uh, on your characters. So I might want to go and give him some military pants. Uh, so for that, I could kind of go in here, maybe create, uh, create a little bit of a mask. Maybe what I'll do is use uh, another vertex color map. Use another color at vertices map. So I have a new one here. I'll actually rename this one, and I'll call this my uh, uh, texture mask. And I'll use black and white colors to denote areas where I do want an effect to appear and where I don't want it to appear. If I use Control w again back to vertex colors mode, high opacity, uh, I'll use a black and white palette, so I can actually just use the color range along the top of the paint mode. And if I use Shift-W, uh, actually I'll do it the other way around. Uh, I'll have white, where I do want the effect to take place down low. We're going to be using a fractal texture to give him uh, army pants. Okay, uh, that'll work there. And we'll paint black where we don't want the effect. Okay, that looks good there. I get the uh, waistline. That looks pretty good. Color this little spot here white. There we go, back to black. Just get all the, uh, the little lines that you might have missed. Definitely missed a lot on this side. So I'll paint all that in there. And uh, I need to add white back in over here. All right, that looks pretty good. So now what I'm going to do is actually use the vertex color map that I've created here as a mixture for a fractal um, texture map. 